In this video, I wanted to describe this uh, switching impedance transformer that I built to use with my short vertical antennas. Um, I use a, a short, about a 16 to 15 foot high vertical antenna ground mounted with about nine radials and it's center loaded with a coil. And uh, I can load it from 40 meters um, up to 20 and then anything above 20 I don't need um, any loading at all. Uh, I like to use that antenna portable however on 40 meters because the radiation resistance is so low I use this uh, impedance this switching impedance transformer to quickly find a match um, so that I can get good SWR values and get a good match at the feed point for running um, my low power radios on 40 meters on such a short antenna. Now for short vertical antennas as you're probably well aware of the radiation resistance is very low because the radiation resistance is proportional to the height of the antenna squared or it's a function of the height of the antenna squared but it's also a function of the frequency squared or the wavelength and um, as the height reduces and the wavelength gets longer or the frequency uh, gets lower the radiation resistance really starts to suffer drastically and uh, since if you consider that your total system resistance on at your antenna is uh, basically the radiation resistance which is the thing that we want that's what's radiating our power but then any losses in the antenna so like if we're using um, a high loss coil or uh, coils that don't have decent Q or whatever um, and then also any any um, effects from operating on bad ground that as your radiation resistance starts to drop very low you can see that these other losses in the system start to take over so um, because the radiation resistance is so low the efficiency of the antenna suffers drastically um, that's one of the reasons I like to use center loaded short vertical antennas as opposed to base loaded because um, if you work the numbers out they are generally on the order of about twice the efficiency everything else uh, being the same but you do end up having to deal with tighter bandwidth because of the loading on the coil when it's center loaded but I use this impedance transformer to get the matching when I use this antenna on 40 meters because on 40 meters I don't get below an SWR2 because of the mismatch between the 50 ohm cabling and the um, antenna input being so small. So um, this is a project from an article on a HAMS website with call sign Alpha Delta 5 X-ray you can go to his website ad5x.com he's got an article section there he's got lots of articles on short antennas how to match short antennas and mobile antennas because these uh, antennas you don't have to match them with a transformer you can use inductive matching you can also use capacitive matching which I usually use also on these antennas but this particular item is a switchable impedance transformer and it's very handy because it's a 10 turn transformer that various taps on it have been wired into a two pole six position switch so that as you switch through the positions on the transformer you're varying the number of turns from the input to the output and you're affecting the impedance transformation ratio and you're getting different uh, step up values because a lot of times you won't know what the, the feed point impedance is you'll just see that you have a mismatch this thing lets you quickly switch through a bunch of different ranges anywhere from a uh, transformation of 1.44 up to a 9 um, times transformation to try to get a match on that uh, short antenna. So um, you, go to, you go to AD5X's webpage and he's got an article there called Multi Impedance Switching Transformer. You get that, it shows you how to build it. This is a sheet from that article and uh, he shows you the wiring of the transformer tells you the core and the core material to wind it on shows you what length of wire you need to start with it is number 16 wire which is about 50 thousandths in diameter copper wire 
uh, varnished, so you'll have to tend the leads on that. One of the wires is center tapped, so when you wind it, wind it, you'll have a center tap on the transformer. And then he gives you the switch hookup as well. I took the information here and I just redrew it on this sheet that you're looking at here. And uh, but if we walk through this thing, basically the way it works is um, it's a it's, the wire is wound on a. In his article, he used an FT114 material, 61 core. I didn't have that. I used a FT140 material, 61. And the only difference is basically it's a little bit bigger in terms of the diameters and the thickness. And then um, I guess the inductance of the inductance per turns will be a little bit higher on this than the smaller winding. But um, he used the small core so that it would fit in this aluminum box made by Bud Industries. This is the same box that he specifies in his articles. It's a Bud Industries box, CU3000A. You can get that on Amazon, probably on eBay, or you can get it at the electronics warehouses. DigiKey or Mauser should have them. Um, but if we look at how this thing works, again, it's a 10-turn transformer, tri trifler wound with a center tap. The taps on the transformer are wired into a two-pole, six-position switch. So this is a two-pole switch is basically two switches in one. When you operate the dial, you're operating both switches at the same time. So position one on this side would be equivalent to position seven on this side. Two on this side is eight over here. Three is nine on down to six is 12 on this side. So if we want to know what the impedance transformation ratio is, we know that the impedance um, ratio is equal to to the number is basically equal to the turns ratio squared so the impedance on the high side is to the impedance on the low side is the number of turns is on the high side is to the number of turns on the low side squared so for instance in position one uh, and we're connecting this where the low impedance side of this transformer is hooked up to the antenna input and then the high Z side will be hooked up to your coax cable, normally your 50 ohm cable going back to your radio. So looking at position one, it's just a bypass. So normally I leave this thing in bypass when I'm operating on 20 meters where I don't have much loading on the coil. Or if I'm on any frequencies above 20 meters, I don't have any loading on the coil. It's the co coil is basically just jumped. So I don't really need any matching. I get a good match. And uh, I just run this in bypass. Um, I will make a note that when I have this hooked up to my antenna, I usually do back it up with a one-to-one -one choke. So I've got like this Ballon Designs QRP one-to-one -one choke that I usually um, hook this up, and then that's what I hook the cable to. And they're, so they're both run in line. So then if we go to position two on the switch, um, it's position eight over here. So on the high side, we got running from position 8 you come down you go into the tap I noticed from his numbers even though it's a 10 turn I guess he assumes it's a it's a four turns uh, or maybe it just works out that it's four turns but nonetheless you come into the tap you go through four turns on this winding go all the way around you go through 10 turns here go around you go through 10 turns there so you got 24 turns on the low Z side you come around and you go through, you go around this one, you got, you got 10 turns here and you got 10 turns there. So you got 24 turns divided by 20 turns squared is, an, is a, a transformation of 1.44. You go to the next position, position 3 is position 9 here. So you go from position 9, you go around, you go through 10 turns here. You go around, you go through another 10 turns, another 10 turns, you got 30. And then on the low Z side in position 3, you come around, you go through, and you got 10 turns there, you got 10 turns there, and you got 20 turns, so the ratio is 30 turns to 20 turns squared is a ratio of 2.25. So what we're doing is we're getting the turns ratio on either side of the transformer. So either side, that's input to ground, so that's input to ground, and then over here it'd be like output to ground, so it's from this output connection to ground. And 
that's what we're just running it through the ground and counting up the number of turns. But you do that for all the positions, you get all of these ratios here. So in the first position, you get a bypass. Second position, you get a 1.44 ratio. Next position, 2.25, you get 4, 5.76, and you get all the way up to a 9. So whatever the low impedance is on the antenna input, we're shifting that up by these amounts um, on the high side, and generally it will get a match to around 50 ohms, and we'll get a good SWR and can use the antenna. Um, it works pretty good. Um, I built it and keep it in my tool bag. It's always with me when I operate portable. And um, any short antennas, I usually have it. I usually have it connected up, and it works good. Um, anyway, that kind of sums it up in a nutshell. But again, you go to alpha delta five x ray dot com. Go to his article section. He's got tons of articles in there. One of which is this multi impedance matching transformer and uh, he shows how to wire it up. It's not that difficult to do. I would say that the only difficulty is um, it is kind of tight to work in this box. So if you get the smaller core, it may be a little easier for you. Um, the wire is uh, number 16 gauge wire, so it's about 50 thousandths in diameter. I would recommend that all of these uh, switch terminals that are jumped together I would recommend that you do that first so they're buried down in there and none of that is in your way when you come back and try to hook the transformer wires up to the terminal itself. You're not trying to duck duck over and under wires and everything that the terminal is easy to get to. And uh, you will have to tend the wire because it's going to be varnished wire that you're using. So you'll have to scrape the varnish off the ends and tend the ends of the leads and um, he tells you what length of wire to cut and again it's trifler wound keep a good spacing on the wires keep a good spacing when you wind the turns on the transformer and it should work pretty good it's very handy to have and uh, I hope it's useful to you if you have any questions write them in the comments I'll try to answer them and I'll put a link to this uh, article in the description as well for you